Hey everybody, we're back at Hobble Creek Craftsman with Mark, and Mark is going to show us how he does a cast today. What are we going to be casting? We're going to be casting uh, honeycomb in the, in the round, honeycomb 360 honeycomb. Oh, 360, and these were the 3D printer you showed us earlier. Correct. You can see there's some hanging right there. Yeah. Gonna... So these are resin printed, right? Yep. Very cool. Resin printed. Those ones happen to be white. Yeah. All right, well, I'm excited to see how you do this. Okay. We shall get started. Do you all mind right. if I take a chair? Not at all. All right. Please do. Okay. And so, now you, sorry to interrupt. You're good. You're good. <laughs> it's kind of what I do. <laughs> you sell these on Hobble Creek Craftsman like this yes. and cast. Yep. You, so if you want to cast your own, you can get these or you can buy them already cast for yep. Mark. And soon I'll be offering uh, the digital download so you can print your own. Mm. So I've been running through some beta testing to make sure I'll be buying those. It all works. So yep. I'm not sure how they'll work on the nylon printers. The, the, uh, I use resin too, so yeah. I'll be good. So the, yep. they're, they're golden with resin printers. Cool. So I'm going to need, I think, one, two, three, four, five, six of these today. And why are they so, in a bucket? Okay, so I keep these in a bucket, a black bucket, because they are UV sensitive. So as they get exposed to UV light, they'll continue to get harder and harder. Oh. So um, you're golden once you cast them, but left uh, exposed like this, over time they'll get uh, pretty brittle. And Interesting. Yeah. So I like a, a, and this is a proprietary mix of resin. Mm. Uh, there's some flexible resin in there as well as some ABS style resin, but you can see there is some some flex to it, so it's uh, it's happy to turn. Yeah, and see these it's are not, details that are important because if I just you know, bought a printer and started casting, I wouldn't know this stuff. And I might leave those laying in the sun and then the, they'd be brittle and break. And you're getting yeah. a better product from someone who's practiced and got a lot of experience for that reason. Yeah, if you leave those out in the sun too long, well, I would say a day. Yeah, a day too, will kill them. <laughs> a day will kill them. Be too brittle. Even your overhead lights, uh, fluorescent lights will... Um, or the window, like if you have a window coming yep. in, yeah. We'll start to, to uh, have an impact on them. So, <clears throat> okay, I, I know by my own recipe that I'm gonna need six ounces of resin to do this pour. Okay. And I always I always pour what I call, I pour fat. So I always have over pour, just in case. I'd rather have over pour than not enough resin to, to finish the pour. Today we're gonna use an eye candy uh, pigment called Gold to Gold. Super nice. Sounds very gold. It is extremely gold. But there's about a bazillion different colors of gold, mm -hmm. different, different shades of gold. Um, I always like to glove up, protect my skin. Very important. Very important. Safety even, first. Uh, even right now, Amy's going to put a safety first across the screen. <laughs> safety first. <laughs> awesome. So I get my Don't gloves. Don't edit that out either. You get my gloves at Costco. You can get tons of them. You can them get gloves at Costco? I didn't know oh, that. Yeah. Why are we not getting gloves at Costco? Cheap. Two, uh, 400 gloves for under 20 bucks. Wow, I'm doing that from now right? on. Yeah. I get them from Harbor Freight and they're terrible. Yeah, these Break are great. And these are yeah, nitro. Those are nice. They're nitro gloves. So, Okay, um, one thing I do like to do, I'm a little psycho about this, is I, because I forget my, uh, my weight. So I know that I'm going to use six ounces. So this is a one-to-one -one resin. Uh, Alumalite clear slow set is what we're going to use today. So I always do this. I put an A for my A side, a B for my B side, and then I put uh, what that split is. So if we're using six, uh, yeah, we're going to use three. Man, is that right? He's checking his book, the secret recipe book. The secret recipe book. Don't worry, it's not on camera. Oh, you're good. No, the book is not on camera. So, no, 10, I know. 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. Um, okay. My mistake. We're going to do 12 ounces of resin. So, I, I will put a 6 for my A and a 6 for my B side so I don't forget. Mm -hmm. If I was doing clear casting, it would be a little bit different. I'd go a little bit heavy on my B side, but we're doing color casting, so that doesn't, that doesn't really matter. I don't want to confuse the issues. So, um, another thing that I like to do over here, I've got, I buy my resin in 80 pound kits, but I transfer them into these uh, half gallon bottles, which is easier for me to maneuver and use. And from those bottles, I even, oh, there you go. for smaller pours, I'll cast, I'll, I'll put them into uh, 
these little bottles. That's a great tip for so small pours. That's what I'm going to use today just because I have more control over the sure. amount. I'm going to tear out my weight. Now, is this a 12 ounce cup so we can fit it all this in there? This is a 16 ounce cup. Okay, perfect. So we're good on that. Yeah, that's something you ought to think about too. Yeah. Is the cup that you're going to pour a whole You don't want to start a 12 ounce pour in an 8 ounce <laughs> cup. It doesn't work very well. It <laughs> doesn't work at all. So here we go. I'm going to start with my A side. I'm going to put in six ounces. And it really doesn't take very much time at all to get that up to the six. A lot of guys use grams. Mm -hmm. I prefer to use ounces. It's just easier for me. I use ounces too. I... And my brain doesn't think in grams. Yeah, I think if we had learned grams early, it probably would be easier, but... For sure. If I was in the UK... It... I only use grams when I'm looking for gold. Then I'll use there you grams. Go. This is the wrong kind of gold, though. <laughs> And so, with that squeeze bottle, you can get it right on perfect. I can get it. Boom. That's much more much precise than what I do. So that's. I'm a bit of a clean freak. I might have to switch to those bottles. That's a great idea. They work well. Okay. So for this type of pour, um, heat is my enemy. Uh, let me yep. grab that can. Um, heat is my enemy. The thicker the resin gets, the harder it's going to be to fill in the little honeycomb cells. So uh, on this particular pour, what I like to do is put in my colors first into my A side. So I'm going to put two teaspoons of this. Some guys just like to guess it. I like to measure it. So uh, again, my, mm -hmm. my pilot side coming out on me. Um, when he said some guys, was he like this? No. <laughs> do you like to do that? Yeah. You just like scoop it, whatever. I guess I'm a little bit uh, no. Well, way. I wish I would do that because it'd be much more consistent and. It's easier for precise. my recipe book. I know exactly what I need, and and, yeah. uh, and then I, and I can when I'm doing larger pours, if I need to forecast for materials. Yeah. It's, no. it's, it's easier for me to figure that out. So I would do it a hundred percent, especially if somebody starting out. Get in the habit of measuring everything and writing everything down. Yeah. Oh, write everything down. So a lot of guys, you can't, you won't be able to see when I put the B side in, in this, you won't be able to see that um, fogginess turn to clearness. Mm -hmm. But I do know one thing for certain, if I stir it for two minutes, I will get a complete thorough mix. Given my ambient temperature, my altitude, all that stuff, Okay. Um, I know that for two minutes, I'm gonna, gonna get a complete mix. So I like to mix this in first. What is the altitude here where we're at? We're at about 4,600 feet. So 4,600, how long do you have open time like with your clear slow? Well, it depends on the ambient temperature. I've got a climate control in here. Mm -hmm. So if I keep it at a, a nice 70 to 72 degrees, my open time is pretty much what it says, 12 minutes. Okay. Um, but you can go past that if you're looking for super duper color separation. You can go right up to 12 minutes before you pour it, but not not very much past that. Uh -huh. uh, then you're, I mean, it's hot. You know that it gets yeah, it gets pretty to get too warm. warm. So I'm just gonna stir this up till I see that the there's no pigment sticking to the side of my cup, and it looks like I've done that. So I'm gonna scrape this off. And again, I like to keep things clean. I use these silicone spatulas. I found them to be uh, indispensable. I also use uh, popsicle stip sticks for certain pores. Mm -hmm. But for this particular That's pour, great. They wipe off real easy. Yeah, and I always like to stick it in this little cup of denatured alcohol. It'll come even cleaner. So I'm going to put, put this back on my scale. I'm going to tear it out. And then I'm going to put in my B side. And then um, I'll show you how we do this. And we have to... We have to move pretty quick we once to, we get... Oh. We have to move quick. Because okay. like I said, thickness is, is, the, is the enemy with this type of pour. So you're, what you're going to do is to try to minimize any chance of air getting trapped. Exactly. Okay. And there's a few little tricks that I use at the end to uh, uh, expel any residual air that's in there. Very cool. And for the most part, I get a, a pretty solid pour. On occasion, there's, there's some that don't turn out. And those are seconds, but I don't sell seconds. They get thrown out. They mm -hmm. get tossed overboard. So 
Okay, I'm going to put in my B side now. I've teared it out. And I'm going to put in six ounces of the B. And now the clock has started. I haven't started my stopwatch, but I'll do that when I uh, get done pouring this, this amount in. So another tip on these, I like to tip it up when I'm going for, uh, to, to fill it back, you know, when you, you, you reach the end of your squeeze, mm -hmm. I like to tip it up so that I'm not pulling air back into the resin. Oh yeah. Just a little, just a little trick I found that helps me. So there's nine, five, there's Boom. six, I'm going to wipe You're... that off. Oh, he's dead on. I was going to say he's five thousandths over, but not <laughs> dead on. We'll be good. Okay, <clears throat> I have a little stopwatch here. I'm going to start it because the countdown has started. I'm going to use another silicone spatula. You can find these on Amazon, or I like to get them from my local uh, gourmet chef store. Oh, yeah. They're fairly inexpensive. They're less than uh, four bucks. They're like three something a piece. Yeah, they, those are great. And they last forever. So the reason I like them is because of this. Yeah. I get a scrape. complete scrape along the bottom and the sides. Well, and I don't know, when I use popsicle sticks a lot, they kind of hurt your fingers after a while. You Indeed pinch they do, yes. This is much better. This is uh, easy on my body, right? Yeah. And when you're an old fart like me. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm doing this for two minutes. I know that... Uh, by experience, if I mix this for a full two minutes briskly, I'll get a complete thorough uh, mix of both the A and the B side. And we can check the temp. Temperature right now is 72 degrees. But so, since you're doing one color, you don't even really have to worry about that, right? No. Because you're going to pour it as soon as possible because uh, of that ASAP, thickness. Yep. Yeah. As soon okay. as I hit this two minute mark. Um, yeah. And I scrape and I scrape and I scrape both the sides, the bottom, the little corners on the bottom of the cup. That is a really nice gold. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. Yeah. It, uh, it really works well with this honeycomb. This honeycomb. Yeah, that's going to contrast nicely with the black. Yeah. So almost ready to be, start the fun stuff. Looking good. Okay, I'm at two minutes. I'm gonna just scrape the sides of this off. Gonna clean it up real quick. And drop it into my denatured alcohol pot there. Okay. So, this is what, how I do these, and it seems to work. Um, as you can see, I've got little black lines um, to where I'll fill, I'll fill up just below those lines. It's just a reminder to me not to fill it all the way to the top, because there's got to be room for those to sink in. Mm -hmm. So I'll do uh, three at a time. It's about where I like to stop. Do you use any kind of mold release in these? Yes, yeah. In fact, I use stoner. Stoner, okay. And I, I pre-sprayed them before you guys came over to, sure. to save you some time. And then I take the sections, and I just go like this. I give them a spin, and I let them do their thing. Yeah, I can actually see the resin crawling through each cell. Right. Like the weight of it is pushing it through. Can you, can you get a close-up of that? Can you see it? You can probably see it just on top. It's kind of cool. And you probably don't want to push it, right? Because no, then you'll trap the air. Don't push them in. Just let them sink by themselves. Towards the end, you might need to give them a little extra help. Sure. And then we'll top them off and get them in the pressure pot. And these are really cool because you can use these for any pen. Yeah. Yeah, it gives you a, a little better than a five inch section like a five and a half inch section okay of usable blank yeah so you could make any uh two-piece pen you can make multiple single body pens yep the Very only cool. pen they won't work with are slim lines 
because there's a little hole in there for the resin and stuff to to drain out. Okay, I'll let those sink. All right, Very I'm going to cool. come back to the ones that I started. Yep. And I take this little, you can use anything. I just happen to have this little brass rod here. And maybe a little bit of help because they're close to being submersed anyways. Yeah. Push them down a little bit. And then one of the key things you want to do, it, it, it's super nice using the clear, the clear PVC because you can see what's going on. Um, but you can also see there's some air down there. Yeah. So what I have found is hook your your little wire in there, whatever you're going to oh, use, just spin it. and give it a spin. Oh, yeah. And that'll push that air in towards the center, and it'll come up or it'll get crushed by the by the pressure pot. So I do that to each each mold as we work around it. And that has worked pretty good for me. Um, I don't know, it would be the same thing if you used like regular white PVC mm -hmm. or ABS. The same thing would be going on. I just, I prefer to see what's happening. It is nice to be able to see that because you can see the air move actually. Yeah. So it keeps, I don't know, it keeps me in the loop. Mm -hmm. Nothing's a mystery here. It's, it's pretty obvious, you know, that you want, you want as little air as possible. And these, these have all kinds of air traps in them. Yeah. So you I built basically one big air trap. Right. Exactly. <laughs> the whole thing. <laughs> so just a little spin. That's all it takes. And like I said, it'll move. At least that's my theory. It moves. Yeah. That air towards the center where that little hole is. And then we'll go and top these off. And get them in the pot. So how much time is, has uh, elapsed? We are, we're into it six minutes. So that's pretty good. Yeah. Then I'll come back through and just top it off. About like that. As you can see, I've been a little messy with this, with this mold carrier. <laughs> but it chips off. Yep. It's 80, what is it, 80H, what is it? HDP. HDP. There you go. <laughs> Something like that. Now, by necessity, the the honeycomb section is a little smaller in diameter than the inside diameter of the PVC mm -hmm. in order to give the air somewhere to go to move up the up the blank. Okay, we'll put these in. We'll put them in. We'll put them in pot B for easier for Amy to film. Yep. So I'll just take this and put it right in. And what pressure do you cast them at? I cast them at 75 psi because that's what this pot will take. Yep. It'll take up to 80. If your pot only takes uh, up to 50. Only go 50. Yep. Go as high as your pot will safely allow you to go. Uh, never push your pressure pots past their design limits, or you're gonna you're gonna get hurt. And I don't like Hercules these down. I don't tighten them like Thor would, mm -hmm. but I make them pretty snug. And I don't like to blast the air in, I like to just kind of sneak it in. Sure. I have an L bracket or an L valve inside that pushes the air out, not down. Yeah. So it pushes it out and down the inside of the mold. Oh, you don't splash them anywhere. Yeah. You ever <laughs> had that happen to you? Yeah. yeah. This compressor might kick on, so it might get a little loud, but... Um, <laughs> Boom. So I'll just take that up to uh, 75 PSI. I have safety relief valves in the event for some reason there's a runaway with the pressurization. So um, I'm a caster that likes to leave my air hoses in. I run four. I've never had any issues, but the caveat is I also have pressure relief valves. 
in case there is some weird runaway uh, pressure issue going on. These valves will blow a, a little past 80 PSI. I've done it before just to see if they work and they mm -hmm. do work and it keeps my workspace safe. I've never worried about these pots. My back is turned to them and I've never had any, any problems with them uh, whatsoever. And that's it. We'll wait two hours, three hours, they'll be ready to pull. Do you usually demold two to three hours? Yep. Okay. That's Excellent. usually what I do. But again, it, it, it depends on your, your ambient pre, uh, temperature. Sure. If, you're, if your shop is nice and cool, say it's in the 50s, you might want to wait a little longer than mm -hmm. two or three hours. Uh, if you're using a different resin, you'll definitely want to wait. If you're using epoxy, you'll definitely have to wait yep. um, before you demold that. What do you do with your extra resin? Well, I put it in my fun cup. I fun learned cup. this from Zach Higgins. I say that sounds familiar. Doesn't fun it? Cup. I just... All the extras. All the extra goes in there. And uh, I actually can sell these. Yeah. They're not pressure treated. And I like to get a little design in them. Learn this from Zach Higgins, too. There you go. I I've heard he, of that guy. He, he casts, he, too, right. I think. The guy's amazing. Well, Mark, yeah. thanks so much. That yeah. was a lot of fun to see, and you gave us several tips that uh, I'm actually going to steal your little bottle tip and your cleaning in the yeah, alcohol jar. Yeah, this works jar. super duper. In fact, um, at the end of this... This is why it's fun to visit other people's shops, because little things like this that you're like, hey, I've been doing this since day one. I should do that. That's it, genius. It, it works for me, you know, whatever. Yeah. However it works for you. So I, this is just a little bottle of acetone. I put a little bit on there. I probably ought to have a glove on, and it cleans it off even better. Oh, okay. It makes it there. So you're ready to go. One swipe goes back into my... And that's nice, too, because Zach and I always talk about, like, there's a lot of waste in casting. Oh, my goodness. So you can reuse these, and it makes yep. it a little less wasteful. Yep. I, I do... I mean, when I'm making a multiple color pour, sure, I use these up like crazy, and I know Zach wipes his off. Mm -hmm. um, I don't. Yeah, I mean, I, I would I get away. it a little more? But the plastic, uh, I just, yeah, you know, we have all the bottles and cups and stuff. Exactly. There's stuff you can't avoid, but you can avoid yeah. that one, so that's yeah. good. So very cool. And uh, there you go. Well, everybody, thanks for watching. Uh, give Mark a shout out. Mark, what's your website? It is HobbleCreekCraftsman.com. And I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to see if he has any of these blanks already cast. We'll buy a couple and we'll do a giveaway. So if you watch this video, go like Mark's Instagram, Hobble Creek Craftsman, like our Instagram or YouTube or whatever, and then we'll do a giveaway. I sure appreciate it. Yeah, it'll be fun. Thank you. All right.